<laughs> Thank you, Zeke. Hi, this is a video about differentiation. It's meant for uh, GCSE students who are doing the AdMath paper or uh, A-level students seeing it for the first time or anyone who's interested, I guess. Um, you are welcome. This is going to be a specific example of doing differentiation from first principles. And I will just recap the theory. So the theory is that lines are easy to understand. We know what lines do. They, they tilt the same way the whole length of the line. And we describe the tiltiness by the gradient. It means how much up you get for your over. If you step over by one, how much do you change in the vertical? Over one, same change in the vertical. Um, so maybe like you have a shallow line and you go over one, up a half, over one, up a half, over one, up a half. And that's the story down the whole dang line. Uh, pardon my, I'm not an artist. Um, and it's scalable, you know, over two, up one, over two, up one. You could have tilted down lines. And we describe that with a negative gradient because when you go over by one, you drop in the y direction. Um, so lines are, we, we know what we're doing with lines. We know how the vertical is changing as we twiddle the horizontal. And that's that's largely what at least half of calculus is about. How much does the up change when you twiddle <laughs> the across? Okay, that, that's, that's the heart of it. So we know that um, the gradient of a line um, in we usually use m for gradient, it's, it's given by the change in y divided by the change in x. How much does your vertical change when you change your horizontal? And you can do that with two points on the line. You subtract the y coordinates, and then you subtract the corresponding x coordinates, and that gives you how much up for your over, rise over run. Okay. In a calculus context, we're looking at what curves do. Curves are wiggly. They're terrible. They're, they're, they're badly behaved. Look at this wiggle all, all over the place. Sometimes they're steep. Sometimes they're shallow. Sometimes they go downhill. Sometimes they go uphill. Sometimes they have peaks. Sometimes they have valleys. Ah, mess all over the place. How do we understand how it's bending um, for any point that we're particularly interested in? So we do this through the idea of tangent lines. So every point you can... You know, I think it's relatively straightforward to get the idea of tangent lines to curves. It's a, a line that touches the curve in exactly one place. It just glances off. Well, I mean, it might cross over here, but locally it just touches in one place. And it gives me an idea of how my curve is bending. So I know that over here on the left, I'm going uphill. We read from left to right, like a book, uh, a Western book. We, we, we read from left to right. So if you're going uphill, your tangent line is tilty up. It has positive gradient. When you're going downhill, your tangent line is tilty down. It has a negative gradient. Um, when you're at the top of a hill, your tangent line is horizontal. Or at the bottom of a hill, your tangent line is horizontal. So we can get a lot of information. You know, we're we're kind of steep here. We're we were less steep up here because the tangent line is shallower has a gradient closer to zero. And so we get a lot of information through tangent lines to curves. So the question becomes, how can we math math out? How can we math out the tangent line? How can we mathematically describe or calculate the value of the gradient um, at a point that we're interested in? And so the theory sets up like this. Um, I wanted to do a specific example. So, um, if you want to see the theory all walked through, I can do that as a separate video. Um, you need to understand function notation, but I want to show how to use this definition. Okay, so through the idea of I need, this comes from needing two points on a curve to get the equation of a straight line. If you only have one point, you can put a lot, lot of different lines through just one point. Um, the curve determines a unique line at a particular point, but 
to get this equation, I need a second point. So it's the idea that you take two points on the curve and that's an approximation of the tangent line I'm interested in. You slide this point closer and closer and closer and the approximate tangent line gets better and better and better. And you control that distance through H. Um, but like I said, I want to work through a specific example of how you use this and, and, and what it all means. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking it that you're more or less okay with where this came from. Okay, so um, let's look at maybe I have a relationship that looks like this. So maybe f of x is x squared, add 3x, add 2. And maybe I want to know the gradient of the tangent line. when x equals 1. Okay, and this is um, nicely factorizable, which makes it easy to graph. So this quadratic looks something like this. It's going to go through minus 2 and minus 1 and have a y-intercept of 2. Yeah, I made that a little bit too spaced out. That's okay. 1, 2, 3. Um, so something like this. I hope you're graphing along with me and not just watching me do it because I'm not the best artist. And if you take your time, you might get a slightly better picture. And I said we were interested in, in the point when x equals 1. So I guess 1 is over here, and I guess I've gone off my page. <laughs> so <laughs> if you pause and graph this for yourself, it will make a little bit more sense. So let, let me just flip that out again. So something like, wow, not an artist, something like, this is a, a dirty trick is to, to draw the graph and then, then put the numbers on. Okay. Um, I know that's the cleaner picture, but some, something like this. So up here, when x equals one, okay, I hope, <laughs> I hope you've got a better picture than I do. Okay, I know the tangent line is sitting right here. Okay, and I would really like to know what the gradient is. How tilty is that line? It's going to be tilty up. I better get a positive number through my calculations. Um, but but how how big? How big is my positive number? Okay, so I guess I guess I could figure out the coordinates of that point when x equals one. What's what's the the vertical value, the f of x value. Well, I've got 1 squared uh, plus 3 times 1 plus 2, so that's 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 2 is 6. Is that 1, 6? I hope I've done that right. Okay, so when I'm at the point 1, 6, I want that tangent line. So I'm going to use this, this definition, and I'm going to let x take the value of 1 because that's what I'm interested in. So I'm looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. And that's saying, that's saying on this branch, I'll, I'll draw the branch a little bit more shallowly so my art is a little bit better. So this is when x equals 1. And if I take a point a little bit further away, a distance of h away, then this point is at the x value 1 plus h. Does that make sense to you? I hope that makes sense to you. So this has coordinates 1, 6, and this has coordinates 1 plus h comma whatever my function spits out for f of 1 plus h. That means I put 1 plus h in for x. And so I've got my, my y coordinates, f of 1 plus h minus f of 1, which is 6, and then my x coordinate, 1 plus h minus 1, which just leaves me with h because the 1 subtract out. Okay, so that's the setup, and now we crunch the algebra through. And I'm going to have to flip the paper over because I've gone to the end. So let me do that. So 1 plus h, okay, so the limit as h goes to 0, f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h, where my function was, what did I tell you? x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, let me put that nicely on my clipboard. All right. So, crunch out the algebra. Okay, so that's the limit as h goes to 0. 
f of 1 plus h means I shove a 1 plus h into my function. So I've got 1 plus h quantity squared plus 3 times 1 plus h plus 2. That's the first piece. And then I'm subtracting the value of f of 1, which was 6. And then dividing that whole top by h. So I have to do some brackety multiplying out gathering like terms, crunching some arithmetic, and then eventually I'll be able to divide an h, and it will simplify quite nicely, and we can see what the limit is going to be. Everything that they give you at GCSC or A-levels will be, like if you have to do it by first principles, um, the algebra will always come out nice. They will give you very, very well-behaved functions where it shakes out nicely and you can see by looking at it what the limit is going to be. Um, if you go on to study math at university or or pick up a fancy book on it or something, um, limit theory is super, super interesting. It's very detailed. It's very precise. It gets It can get very complicated very quickly. And so we develop a whole arsenal of, of weaponry to, <laughs> to use to evaluate limits where it's not obvious by looking. And we have technical language, so we don't have to do it by looking. We can describe it precisely. But at A-level, we they just want you to get the concept of what you're doing in a few contexts with limits. And, and that's okay. You, you don't have time for everything. If you can't sleep, let me know. Okay, so crunch out the algebra. So that's 1 plus 2h plus h squared plus 3 plus 3h plus 2 minus 6. I guess I could have said minus 4 at that point. All over h. Let's clean that up. So the limit as h goes to 0. Uh, well, let's see. Um, 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 2 is 6. Subtract 6. Oh, that all went to 0. Groovy. All right, my constants subtracted out to 0. I've got a 2h and a 3h, so I guess that's a plus 5h. And then I have an h squared. I don't know why I had the plus there. And then an h. And that's going to shake out. If I divide top and bottom by an h, factorize a top off, factorize an h off the top, and then divide top and bottom by h. That's going to leave me with 5 plus h. And so what the limit means is I'm letting this h get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what scoots my two points closer and closer and closer to each other. And you, you can approach 0 from the positive side, you know, 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.00001, you know, however you want to squeak down to zero from the positive direction, or you could squeak up from the negative direction. You could have minus one, minus a half, minus a tenth, minus a hundredth, minus a billionth, and squeak up to zero from below. It doesn't matter. You just want to head to, toward zero. And if you do that for h, it makes five plus h head towards the number five. So the limit is where you're headed. You might not actually ever get there, but you know where you're headed to. And I can say more about limits if you can't sleep. And there's some nice stories that help explain how to visualize some stuff. Okay, so the end result of all of this is 5. And this is the gradient. What the hell is this 5? This is the gradient, gradient of the tangent line to our happy function at the point 1 comma 6. Okay, so we got a positive value, which means that it's a tilty up tangent line. Yep, as you read from left to right, it's tilty up. Yep, that's what we predicted. Okay, and I reckon that it would be a little bit on the steep side. So 5 is somewhat, I mean, you, you can be steeper than 5, but it's certainly not a shallow line. It's not a shallow line, it's a steep line. And that's reasonable, just, you know, ballparking it. That's, that's a reasonable answer. Okay, so that, that's how we do it. So the gradient of this tangent line is 5. And you can write the equation of the tangent line almost for free. Because okay, I know a point on the line. That's where the line touches my curve, the point 1, 6. And I have... A gradient of 5. So you can do mx plus c. 
solve for C and get the equation of your line. Um, you can also use point gradient form of a line and just drop your numbers in. Um, by either method, it doesn't, you know, same of a sameness. So this would be, if I drop in one and six for X and Y, and I slap in a five for my gradient, I guess um, C is one. Does that make sense to have a y-intercept of one? Yeah, I guess, I guess it kind of does. Even with my bad art, <laughs> I guess I'm convinced that one is a reasonable y-intercept. Okay, so, so my equation is five x plus one, and that's the equation of a tangent line. Or if I'd done it in point intercept form, y minus six equals five times x minus one, and you can leave it like that, or you can wiggle it out, you'll still get five x minus five plus six, there's your five x plus one. And that's really nice. And you know, you can go to um, a graphing program like GeoGebra or Desmos. I'm a, I'm a Desmos kind of a girl. GeoGebra is just as good, just as shiny. It's free, it's all online. You can just go to the website and go to the graphing calculator and you can graph our function to get the nice quadratic. And you can graph the line 5x plus one. And you can even type in coordinates of a point. You can literally type in on one of your equation lines in Desmos, you can type in the coordinates like this and it will draw the dot for you. And you can see that the line is tangent to the curve at this point. Okay, and this is what we're doing with this business. To, to go through it from the definition and the theory like this, that's called first principles because that's the definition of where everything comes from. And it turns out that there are lots of patterns. Um, you can do this in the abstract with any X. You don't have to use one for X. You can do it in the abstract with an X. I'll do that in, in a second here for you. Um, and that will give you an expression in X. So all you have to do is say, oh, I'm interested in the point when X is two. So you could slap a two into the expression and it will tell you the gradient. Or I'm interested in the gradient when X was minus 10. Okay, slap a minus 10 in for X and you've got the gradient calculated right there for you because you've gone through first principles in the abstract with an X instead of a specific number one. And you realize going through a few of these that there are going to be patterns. And so math is all about finding patterns and exploiting them because we're lazy. And well, that's one of the reasons. we are, <laughs> Mathematicians are fantastically lazy. So if there's a pattern, um, absolutely exploit it. Um, but it turns out that there's a really nice pattern for polynomial functions. Polynomials are where you've got whole number powers of x, positive whole number powers of x, and they differentiate just beautifully. And so once we understand that there is a pattern, we can just use the pattern. Actually, it works for any power function. You can have any, any index. You can have negatives or fractions or irrationals, whatever you want. Um, but let me show you doing it in the abstract with an X. This is an example with a specific point. I, I, I hope this this was helpful. If it's not, um, please, please say. Okay, so here's how we do it with an X. So we're going to use the same happy quadratic. Okay, and we're going to get the gradient of the tangent line for any X. So for any X point on this curve. Okay, so the definition always starts out like this, change in y over change in x, that's the change in the x. Okay, then we put, I hope you're following along, I hope you pause and write this out for yourself. It's much more fun to ri ride the bike yourself than to watch me ride the bike. Um, okay, so if I put an x plus h in, well, just like I did before with the 1 plus h, but this time I have an x. Does everybody have an X? That's a bit personal. Okay, and this time instead of having a numeric value, I'm just going to put what the function is with the plain old X in it. And you're, you're subtracting that entire phrase. So remember your brackets. You don't have to use square brackets. You can use roundy brackets. And I just chose square ones because I would have roundy, 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 and that's a bit visually confusing. But remember that you're subtracting this whole thing. 
Okay, and then we are dividing by h. And that looks like an awful mouthful, but it's going to shake out just fine because everything they give you at GCSE or A levels will shake out nicely. Okay, you just have to wade through the algebra of it. We're brave. We can do algebra on most days. We subtract that x squared, subtract that 3x, subtract that 2, divide that whole thing by h. I guess if you're fancy, you could multiply by 1 over h, but I just keep the fraction. So h goes to 0, and a lot of this is going to clean up. You might have spotted it already. There's, there's a lot of things are going to subtract themselves out. x squared, subtract x squared. Groovy. Okay, we've got a plus 3x. Subtract 3x. Add 2, subtract 2. A lot of stuff will drop out like that. And it's going to leave me with a 2xh plus h squared plus 3h all over h. So I can factorize an h from the numerator, divide top and bottom by h. And that leaves me with a 2x plus h plus 3 got a little bit more in it than the previous one did, but these are still understandable pieces. Okay, so this limit notation, it tells me that h is the moving part. x isn't moving. This is the expression for any particular x, but x isn't moving in, in this definition. Only h is moving um, to take the limit, to scoot those two points close to each other. So h is the only moving part. So 2x stays as 2x. 3 is going to stay as 3. And if I add h, a quantity that's getting ever and ever and ever closer to 0, as close to 0 as you want, then this whole expression is squeaking up on whatever 2x plus 3 is. And that's the limit of that expression as h goes to 0. So this gives me a piece of algebra to calculate the, the gradient of the tangent line anywhere on this function. I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. Okay, this calculates the gradient of the tangent line for any x value I care about and the ones I don't care about. For any x value I care about on the graph of x squared plus 3x plus 2. So when x equals 1, your gradient is 2 times 1 plus 3. Hey, that's our 5 that we found manually. When x equals 2, the gradient is 2 times 2 plus 3, which is 7. So it's a little bit steeper, and that makes sense if you're a, where's my happy picture? We know we're on the right branch of the quadratic, so if you step over to 2, we're up here on the curve, and the tangent line is going to be steeper. What if we come back this way? What if, uh, what if we're at minus 1? What if x equals minus 1? Then the gradient is... 2 times minus 1, add 3, which is negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. So I know at when x is minus 1, I'm still on the, the right-hand branch of my quadratic, um, but I'm I'm not very steep for a tangent line. I'm a little bit shallow. And I think, I think actually, because symmetry right here at minus 1 and a half, I think I think that's where I'm going to be at the bottom of this quadratic, and I think I'm going to have a nice horizontal tangent line. What's the gradient of a horizontal line? Zero. If you said zero, congratulations. If you didn't say zero, I, I, I hope it's because you're, uh, you're, you're, you're playing Tetris and not actually watching the video anymore. Okay, so when x equals minus one point, do you play Tetris? Do people still play Tetris these days? Sometimes I still get, you know, like when you do something over and over and over and then you go to bed and you close your eyes and you're still doing the task in your brain, like like a, like an after image kind of effect. I, I still play Tetris in my head that way sometimes, even though I haven't actually played Tetris for a while. All right, well, if x is minus 1.5, then the gradient 
going to be 2 times minus 1.5 add 3, which is, well, twice 1 and a half is 3, negative, that's, that's our 0. That's our horizontal tangent line. We're, that confirms that we're right at the bottom of the bowl. That's a really useful thing to use the gradient to figure out where on your curve you've got a minimum or a maximum. I guess you wouldn't know, unless you already knew the picture, you might have to do a little bit more work to figure out which of these two you have, but there's ways and means to do that. That's fine. Okay, I hope I'm helping. Um, one last comment is notation. So how do we use notation for the derivative? Notation for the derivative. Okay, so we calculate it through this limit gradient change in y change in x take the limit as we squeak the two points closer and closer together we notate this as the derivative with respect to x of whatever it is that we're differentiating so we could say the d's mean please do differentiation the x means that's the variable the, the, the horizontal variable, your independent variable, the, the variable you're paying attention to. Okay, please differentiate that thing. So if if you only have a, a function, but you're not sure what the algebra is, then you can write it like this. If you know what the algebra is, you can slap the algebra in. You can do that. If you have um, something written as a yx relationship, so I could have written y equals x squared plus 3x plus 2 instead of f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I could say, please, I'd like you to differentiate y with respect to x. Okay, and it's very common in typesetting to, if you just have that single y, to slap that y on top like that but every time you see this you must think in your head i am differentiating with respect to x that thing you'll see it you'll see it as um df dx as well but you know we all know that we are being asked to please differentiate whatever f is with respect to x Okay, another way, if you're using function notation, you can also use prime notation. f of x is the original. f prime of x means the derivative, the expression that calculates the gradient of the tangent line. So sometimes we use prime notation. I think there are a few other notations, but that's enough for now. Okay, I, I really hope I've been helping. Um, if you are still confuzzled, uh, let me know. <laughs> I'll do my best to say some more. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Bye. -a.